Yeah, let's, let's get started. So um, I'm going to go over some information. Hey, there, there's seats down front here. So if you get here late, there's seats over here. There's seats in the middle. Hey, so I'm going to go over some information. If you're, if you're, uh, if you're not in the class or if you're, uh, if you're in the class and you're watching on the stream. So uh, just know that we're, I, I just got to take about five minutes today to go over some things. Uh, regarding attendance. All right, man. So first off, you, you all, today we start attendance. So you can, um, there's, there are three, diff, two different ways that we can take, that we're taking attendance in the class. One is we're doing a quiz on Canvas. And so by the way, if you haven't, uh, when you come into class, make sure that you're on the Penn State Wi-Fi, okay? Don't be on guests. If you haven't figured out how to do it, just we got to go to the help desk over in the library or you can download the, the, look at the QR code that, I, that we put up. You can check it out after class. But, um, so you want to make sure you're on the Penn State Wi-Fi. So that's going to be the easiest. And we're going to work on that. So don't wait to the last minute because you, you have a couple minutes to really get connected to it now. All right. So next thing is, uh, wait, go back. The second thing is, if you're not in class, remember, attendance is an assignment. So if you're not in class, that means you have to do a class reflection assignment. And that's pretty easy to find on the website. So you would go right here, finding the, the you, you're, you're going to watch a recording of the class. So you go to the main webpage, live streaming videos, uh, the, the, either watch the live stream or spring 2024 videos. We post them right after class, the long video. And so you're going to use that to write your class reflection assignment. And... Uh, when you do the class reflection assignment, just make sure that you're aware of what class you're in. So like today's class would be class number four. And so, because when you do this, you have to click on the, the class so it goes to the right place, okay? You got it? So you either have to take the two Canvas attendance quizzes in class at the beginning of class or the end of class, or you have to write a class reflection assignment. There's no excused absences in here. So if you're not here in the room, that means you, you have to do the class reflection assignment regardless of the reason why you're not in the room, okay? Now, if you can't get on Wi-Fi for some reason, and we're, gonna ha we're working on how to making sure that you all figure this out and you all have a strong signal and Wi-Fi works. Hey, bro, there, yeah, yeah, there's seats. Okay, um, but if for some reason you struggle with the Wi-Fi in the room, then here's what you have to do. You have to take a selfie and... The selfie is going to look like this. You, you have to be in the selfie. And in the background, you're going to have to see one of these screens. And we're going to have something on the screen when we take the quiz. It's all really simple. And so just understand, it's a lot coming at you. But let's say you're on your phone. Remember if you were here last class and you're like, oh, man, I can't get, into cam I can't get on the quiz on Canvas. It's not showing up for me. Then just get your phone out and take a selfie. Make it look like this. Not like that. That's not a selfie. And not, don't do one of these Snapchat things where you're in one side and you, you take a shot of the screen in the other side. No, you got to take the selfie. And then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, upload that to on, you're, what you're going to see on Canvas is, is kind of like a, an assignment Dropbox. I don't know what it's called, but it's called Selfie Photo Issues. And you're going to pick the one for this day. And you're just going to dump that selfie in there. And that'll be your attempt. We'll know like, okay, you were here either for the first quiz or the second quiz. Once we get going in the semester, there's only going to be five or six, five to ten people every day who, for whatever reason, can't connect to Canvas, and they got to upload a selfie. Okay, cool? You got, does that make sense? Make sure you do it right, because if you don't, you're not going to get attendance for it. And getting it right is not really that difficult. This isn't uh, like brain surgery, so to speak. So uh, here, so are we good? Bro, are you good? Is that all really clear? Is that clear? Bro. All right, man. So here, for example, is the first day's attendance. So you can hop into to, uh, Canvas, and, and you will see a quiz, the first quiz, right? It's the only one that's going to be open for today's class, and that's your code. And here's the deal. You don't, don't share that code with your friend who decided they didn't want to come to class today. And they're like, hey, uh, can you just send me the code? Because you could take the attendance quiz from anywhere in the world. 
because there's no geolocation on it, but you're not going to share that code. And the reason you're not going to share that code is because we will find out. Because we have a way of finding out. And like, you don't want to be in that position, bro, right? Like, you don't want to be in that. You got to explain to your grandmother why it is that you went to uh, Social 119 jail. I don't know what you, whatever it is, right? Are we good? So are, are you all like, are you rocking? Are you on? It's working? For how, for how many people did it not work? Really? Everyone's on. You, take, you just took the Canvas quiz? Damn. Wow. Like, oh, oh, my God. That life is amazing. All right. Here's something else that you do. Uh, so you get the selfie thing, right? You get how to do that. So here, here's another piece of, of the puzzle. Um, yo, this is really important, okay? This is, hang on. Hang on, I, I need, I, I, now I really need everyone to pay attention, unless you're taking the quiz. So you got two things. One, make sure you, you, your laptops are put away, and during class, once you take the quiz, bro, you can, you can put your phone away, because you don't need it, bro. But here's, here's what you got to, here's what you have to do. You, you got to, you want to listen to me on this. Um, take the first attendance quiz and leave. You know what I mean? Like, like, you can't do that. That's just so uncool. That's like the worst mojo in the world. You're like, I know, but I need the points because if I don't get the points, I'm going to not get an A. If I don't get an A, I won't get in my major. If I don't get in my major, my life will be over. And so you're going to cheat in order because you're afraid. It's like, don't do that. Just don't do it. You can't, don't take the quiz and then leave. Or don't show up with five minutes before, five, five minutes before the end of class just so you can take the last quiz. Like, God. Yeah, just don't do that. I can't even begin to explain how just... Awesomely uncool that is. All right. So, I think we're good. Dude, are we good? All right. We'll do the second quiz toward the end of class. By the way, there are always seats in here. So, if you come in late, there's a seat right here. Here's two seats down here. There's going to be a few seats because our volunteers are coming up today. So, um, hey, uh, let's start. All right. We have, I think we have a cool cut. Wait, Diego. Dude, Diego, why don't you come up? And Samantha, why don't you come up? And so we have four. Still loading? Take a selfie, dude. Yo, if you were not able to take that quiz, you got to take, can you put that, put that, put it back up just for a second? Yo, if you did not confirm that you took this quiz, you just got to take a selfie with that. Dude, you got, dude, beautiful selfie, man. I love it. Hang on, take another one. All right, man. All right. Hey, can you, um, all right, we're ready. So class today is called Becoming American. All right? So why don't we, we're going to introduce, can you, why don't we start... Samantha, why don't we start with you? I mostly go by Samantha, uh, and I'm from South Korea. Are you from Seoul? Yes. Seoul Young. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Diego, and I'm from the Dominican Republic. All right, so... Uh, so a couple quick things to be clear. So Samantha, you lived in Virginia for four years. Yes. Yeah. For so, high, just for high, high school. school there? Yeah. yeah. And bro, you and you grew up, spent the first fifteen years in the DR. Where in the DR? Santo Domingo, the Republic, uh, the yeah. capital. Yeah. And then you and have you gone back since then or? Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've haven't been there in like two years though. So are you? getting residency in the U.S., or are you 
is your residency in the... Uh, I already have a green card. Oh, you have a green card yeah. here? Okay. And Sam, you don't, right? You're not getting residency? Um, I'm, I'm, planning on, I'm planning on getting maybe after graduation. Yeah. Like maybe it, if I get a job here. I got you. Okay. All right. Hey, so, all right. Let, let's do this. Um, when you say, if someone says, uh, when you say that someone is assimilated, okay, what, 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 does, what does that mean? Like, what, what's it look like for someone to be assimilated? You know, and assimilated, so if you're th thinking about it, assimilated means, dude, did you get my email? Did you? <laughs> See me after class. All right, so uh, uh, assimilated means just to be like, okay? To be like. You know, to become like. So how, what's it look like for someone to be assimilated into another culture? This is a wide open question, by the way. Remember, there's no right or wrong. You're just here to tell us, Sam, we're going to start with you. Like what? Um, I feel like being assimilated into one's culture would be like. To a different culture. To like different culture. Um, you kind of like start to like adapt into how like. Like the lifestyle or food, language, I feel like like starting. I feel like starting with learning one, learning other culture in in a different country would be like first way to be assimilated. Okay, all right. So like different cultural things, uh huh. And I'd say something similar, but like uh, adding to that also social norms, because sometimes the like let's say the people you hang out with in your home country and like the the way you interact with them is different mm -hmm. sometimes like the, the even the humor varies sometimes mm -hmm. or the the way you just like interact with your neighbors and you conduct your activities i'd say hey so can you give me an example for you uh yeah well, yeah for example like on the dr uh it's just one that i've gotten that just popped in my head <laughs> the music, for example, which is blast music at all times of the day, no matter what. It's just... Dude, tell me about <laughs> it, man. Yeah. When I was in the DR, it was nonstop music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, in every corner, we have like this little mini markets we call Colmados. Uh -huh. uh, and they're, they're like, well, yeah, mini markets, but they're open. They, yeah. When they close, they have to like pull down metal sheets because it's uh -huh. just open. You, anyone can just enter there, and they have big, huge speakers, and they're blasting music all day. We'll just go in there, sit outside, drink beer, and like hang out with everyone. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, even the neighbors too. Like, you might have your neighbor at 10 p.m. just blasting music if you yeah. want to sleep. Yeah. But. But you just do you it. Just, yeah. And you just put up with it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. when you want to do it. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your neighbor one night. It's you the next night. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Sam, how about you? Do you have an example of, like, what's the very first thing when you came to the U.S. and for high school? What's the very first thing you grabbed onto? Um, maybe I think it's, like, I don't know. Like, I think for me, I learned, like, um, for me, like, doing Pledge of Allegiance every morning was kind of shocking for me. Did you we don't really do, do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we don't really do it in Korea. Wait, did you do it? Yeah, yeah. Even Only though like, it's like it, it's like for, it's for citizenship of sorts. So, what were you thinking when you were doing the? Did you put your hand on your heart? I kind of had to. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Same with you. It forced us to. But you, really? Ah. So how was that for you? It, it felt kind of weird because yeah. I was like doing pledge of allegiance for like I don't know. Another country. Kind For of. another country, yeah. right? Hey, so Americans, think about this, right? You know, we're asking these foreigners to do, to pledge their allegiance, because they're here in school, right? Sam, Sam was an exchange student, basically, for four years, right? But we're saying, like, hey, you got to pledge your allegiance to our flag, to our country. And, like, and same with you. Like, you, yeah, that's kind of wild. All right. So... I mean, just for Americans, just think about that for a second. second. You know, we're, what we're saying is that, you know, we make 
If, if that were to happen to us, we'd be really bothered by it in another country. But, you know, we're demanding those kinds of things. Hey, by the way, if you came in late, you know, there's a lot of seats down in the front. So you just got to come down around and sit down. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Hey, let me, let me, I'm, did you have another thing you were going to say? Like, when I was in Korea, we only did, like, um, solitude, of, solitude of Korean flag and the singing the national anthem only yeah. during, like, school assemblies. Yeah, not every day. Well, for me... Uh, every day we did line up in the like in the yard and sang the national anthem. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's still kind of weird. Back think. back home. Yeah, you mean yeah. in the DR. Yeah. Hey, can you go to the next slide? So here's uh, here here's okay. So go actually go to the next one. Yeah. Hey, so what is an American? And we're gonna. So I'm gonna. So for you, this is important. So we don't. So in Spanish or in English, we don't have an, ab an adjective like, in, what, what do you call an, a person from the United States in Spanish? Like tell them what you call Estadounidense. Them. Estadounidense. That means a United Statesian is what that literally means. But we don't have that in English. Like we don't say United Statesian. So we say, we've just come to start talking about those of us in the United States as Americans. But you're an American too in the DR, right? Yeah, and that's something weird because when I came here also, not, in, not only when I came here, but when I was down there, when I was learning English and stuff, uh, I was kind of looking sometimes for that, for that term, United States, and I couldn't find it. Everyone just yeah. called themselves American. Yeah. And it's weird because in school there, uh, opposed to, as to here, I, I noticed that it teaches that America is only one continent. Here yeah. they teach North America, South America, and Central America, like three yeah. different continents, something like that. Yeah. But for me, it was only, it's, always, it's always been one continent. Yeah. So I've always considered myself an American, even though I wasn't born in the United States. So, so somos americanos means like we are Americans. And that's of every, from Canada, from the yeah. northern tip of Canada down to the southern tip of Chile. Yeah. Uh huh. So, so but now we're just going to use American as a United Statesian, okay? So let's just let's just work with that. So how do you know someone's a United Statesian? How do you know? No, I don't mean like when you see that if you're in the DR and you see them on the beach or something like how tell 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 the Americans what tell us living in the US what you see as an immigrant as a new person here what you think it means to become to be an American. Like, what do you know? What do you see? What do you see someone do? What do they do? What do they think? Sam, you can, go, either one of you can go, if you want to go. Um. Sam, do you have something? What are you thinking? Re what's, what makes it really tough? What I feel think? like... I, would th I thought this was going to be a really easy question. Like, I feel like being an American would be... Like you speak English, but there are so many other countries that speaks English, like Canada, UK, Australia, for example. Yeah. Um, I thought like maybe the accent. I thought accent would be like one unique thing that would make like American, but I realized that Canadian English also has like a similar accent yeah. as American English, so. Yeah. Accent is like, I don't really think accent is like a huge thing. Like what makes American, American? Okay, so here, let me give you an example. You're watching somebody and someone says, you know, well, I'm an American, right? What, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you, what's your mind go to that that person? Well, I'd say sometimes they're kind of categorized a lot with patriotism. Strong patriotism, strong, uh, strong sense for that, and patriotism the, just toward the U.S. or just patriotism? Patriotism towards the U.S. Okay, all right, I got you. All right, so. and like the the thing that makes the question a little bit uh, kind of tough is that um, being an American, uh, the United States itself is, is the culture is like very mixed. I'd say. Mm -hmm, okay. Because okay. uh, there's a lot of people come from a lot of different places. Okay. So it's difficult to categorize a specific type of person here. But, I mean, something I would say back when I was there before I, I 
okay. for all of this. It's just, it would be very simple. Like, we will categorize an American, oh, white, blonde, speaks English. White, blonde, <laughs> speaks <laughs> English, right? <laughs> but you got here, and you start realizing, yo, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. Man. It's way more complex. And where do you live in the U.S.? Uh, here in PA, Reading. And, in Reading? Yeah, okay, so Reading, there's a ton of Latinos in yeah. Reading, too, right? Uh-huh. Sam, did you, were you going to? I thought, like, everything I saw through, like, Hollywood movies or, like, dramas like Friends, Modern Family would be, like, not like Modern Family, but, like, mostly Friends would be, like, the typical Americans, but I realized that I think Modern Family and also TV show Glee also changed my mind, like, because... There's so many diverse people around the world, like in the U.S. alone. And I thought like, and like, we also see like um, gay couples in Modern Family. And I feel like being open towards like the LGBTQ culture was like kind of what like Americans would think. Like, I don't know. Like, There's something there. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's very different from the Korean culture, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's like what I see from Hollywood. Can you, all right, can you just say something quickly about what you mean by that? Like, give people a window into Korea. Um, Korea's like, um, one of the, I feel like, I don't know if I should. Go ahead, I'll help um, you out. I, like, some people think, like, sometimes, like, I get this question, it's like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Korea. And someone asked, someone asked like, north or south? Uh-huh. And south, obviously. I'm from the south, I'm from the south, obviously. Because, like, it was more Cause, cause in the people, news. Like, people hear more about North Korea in the news than South Korea, I think. Yeah, well, in certain, and in, in, in some ways, right? So the idea. idea is like, look, if you're from North Korea, you're not going to be coming to the United States for high school, right? So it's only right. going to be South Korea. The other thing about North Korea that matters here is it's very monocultural, right? Koreans are Korean. I mean, they're very, uh, you know, it's a very small number of Koreans. People living in South Korea, the Republic of Korea, are actually for, born outside of Korea and are there working or living or whatever the case is, right? It's a very small percentage compared to the United States. And so it's a very monocultural society. So when you come here, you experience all of this incredible diversity, right? So what's an American then is it's complex, complex is a very complex question. Yeah. And also, when you live down there, the, um, I mean, the, the majority of input you get from American culture is from yeah. TV shows yeah. and all that. Uh, except if you live like around a tourist area, because you'll see a lot of uh, Americans there. But the, ma the majority of input you get is from American media, right? Because we're getting uh, movies, shows, and all of those types of things. So what we get about the experience of living in America is just going to like having the high school, the perfect high school yeah, life, yeah. and having the, the college experience, and uh, living in a big house doing all these, all these things that you would categorize as rich things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You see in the media, but it's yeah. not really happening in the same way. Hey, let me ask you. So, so let me, uh, so the first, the first thing is really interesting that um, I just want to, let me say, can you go to the next slide, actually? Ch check, out, check out some of this. I'm going to show you some data here. Um, so this is current, right, about... 60% of the population in the United States identify as white, non-Hispanic white, okay? That, that's, okay, that's three out of five, but you know, two out of five people don't identify that way. So almost, you know, 18.5% Hispanic, 12, a little over 12% identify as black, 5.5% uh, is Asian, and then, you know, and then we have uh, multi-race people, indigenous, and then indigenous peoples, right? So, the United States is a very, you know, when you're back home in the DR and people, you're thinking that, hey, the U.S. is a white nation. Well, 40% of the U.S. is not white. I mean, it's like, look at this room right here. This, it is a, it's an incredibly multicultural, multiracial world. This room very much reflects what the United States is like because we're just about 
40% black and brown in, in the room. So here, and then here's the projected race ethnicity breakdown coming. So here we are today, again, like this is the white pop, the, 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 the yellow here is the white population. So, you know, we're about 60%, okay? And then as we go to 2025, 2030, and go up into about 2060, look at suddenly, you know, white people become very much uh, the minority. And by, 20, by 2060, it's, we're thinking about 44%, but a recent analysis that I just saw is more like 40%. 40% of the United States being white. And so, you know, that is a pretty... That's like a, that's a really big change. So here, um, by the way, take a look at this. I don't know how well you can see this, but look at the, these are the people who received immigration visas in 2021. So there, there are really very, there are no white countries in here. What we would call white countries, none. These are the top countries. So Mexico is the highest number at 40,000. And then just look here, Dominican Republic, by the way, almost 18,000. So look where are the white people? The people we will call white. Right. I, I don't see anybody. Well, okay, Ukraine. There we go. Uh, Iranians, in a way. I mean, they're Persians, but, you know, most Iranians would look kind of white. So, here, look. This, this is the future of the United States. The future of the United States is blackening and browning, right? So, let me ask you, then let's go back to this for a second. So, when you... Let's just talk about the United States being a white nation and, and how we're, I don't know, just how you're shifting on that. When you hear someone say that today, like, can, can, I just want to explore this a little bit. Do, do, um, well, I, I, especially, especially, by the way, for you as an Afro-Caribbean guy. Yeah. Right? right. Yes. That, the, that you are, the, like, so we think, think about, about the United States and we think about, hey, who, look, look at the, the, the three of us up here, right? Who Please. is, uh, which one most represents the United States? And so, you know, you say, okay, yeah, there's more people who are white. But the truth is, at, at a certain point in time, it doesn't really matter. Because if you look out in this classroom and you, like, okay, hey, there, there are, are more white, white people, people in here than any other group, right? But, like, would, would you say that white people represent the classroom? Why, why not? Like, why wouldn't you say that? Like, what's the... Like, if you see, I know a lot of, like, a lot of the students here are, identify themselves as white, but um, there are also, like, a lot of African-American students being represented and also a lot of Asians or Hispanics. Middle Eastern? Yeah, Middle Eastern. Yeah. So, like, it just means that to say something, like, people will say, like, oh, Penn State's white or Pennsylvania's white or... The United States is white, but at a certain point in time, when I look at these numbers, it's like that's, that's not, not right. it's very different. So you, you were going to say something, and I, <laughs> I think I cut you off. Yeah, I was going to say about uh, the United States being perceived as a white nation. Uh, it's, it's interesting because when you're down there in the DR, if you like talk to people about, you see a foreigner and you talk to them, uh, when they're white, you instantly assume that they're from the U.S., even uh. if you like right away even if they even if you hear them speak english if they're not white you might assume oh maybe they're from another english speaking country maybe they're not from the u.s but if they're white and speaking english you automatically assume they're from there and and, and why is that just because it's white is so associated with the u.s i'd say so yeah and and also because it's like the closest country we have uh -huh. to like closest white nation yeah yeah sam you were gonna say something um, yeah, I, I would say, I would say so, like, I think it was, like, back in the 50s during the war, I thought, like... The Korean War. Yeah, the Korean War. Um, there were a lot of, uh, U.S. troops in Korea, and also, like, and also there were so many, like, European nations also helped, helped uh -huh. South Korea during the war. Um, like, in the past... In Korea, like some people associate it, like if you're white or like with the U.S. Yeah, they would associate yeah. them with, like, oh, they're from the U.S. if they're mm -hmm. white. Mm -hmm. Hey, how? Let me ask you a question. Um, 
If you, the two of you, decide to, to get, get citizenship, citizenship in the U.S., I mean, well, you're kind of on your way, but you haven't, you don't have any residency at all, right? So you're not. But how? What would you do in your minds? In your minds, right? In your way of thinking to be more American. Like, what do you think you would do? What would you have to do? Or what would you do? No, it's not what you don't have to do anything. But what would you do? Because you would. Right? Like, what would it be? Like, what would you? Hmm. In certain documents, or I mean, I'd have to, but in certain settings and stuff, I'd have to start identifying myself, like internalizing that I am American. I would start presenting myself as Dominican American, mm-hmm. and that would, that would. I don't know. <laughs> Do you right now? Do you think of yourself as Dominican American? Because no. just Dominican. Yeah. Even though you have a green card, but but, the, the, but once, once you, you, if you put your if you swear an oath to the flag, which you would do if you become a citizen, which you're on the path to becoming a citizen, I imagine, right? I don't want to push that on you. It sounds <laughs> really? like you I mean, I know you have a green, green card. card. I mean, you're pro- in all likelihood, you're going to be a citizen. Probably. Okay, so in that, that moment, moment then, then do you, do you in your mind, do you imagine you're going to become Dominican-American or would you become American or what, what would you be? I have to internalize myself that I'm Dominican-American. I, I, I wouldn't say that because... Recognizing myself as only American would be ignoring the 15 years of my life I passed in the DR. Okay. So right. I wouldn't take that out of my, my identity. Can you say something about that? Because a lot of people struggle with the idea that people like you, like <laughs> people like you, uh, come here and from a different country and you take on citizenship, but you continue to identify with your home country in addition to your current country. And there are a lot of Dominicans I know who are actually Americans. Yeah. Born here, they still call themselves Dominican. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're an American, man. Like, come on, you have a U.S. passport. You're like, like what, what's, the, what's the point of that, right? So, but you're saying, no, 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 but, I, but I'm connected to that. So can you just say more about that connection? It's mainly because I grew up there. Yep. If it was like, let's say I was born here, I spent 15 years here, and then I moved to the DR, I would say that I would recognize myself as American, I'd say, because uh, all, my, my, all the experiences I passed at the, like, from the beginning of my life, all the first friends I made, all the first experiences, how I knew the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was in the Dominican Republic. So, it's, so that's it's, in you. It's like something that built me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a person. Okay, so, so for us, us for, for people, well, for, for Americans to, to, to look at you and say, hey, but, but you should call yourself American, not Dominican American. What they're doing is saying, no, nah, like that, that's a part, that's a part, you're, you're denying this really yeah. important part of me. Denying the, like, my beginnings. I'd Your say. beginnings. Yeah. Could you imagine calling yourself American Dominican as opposed to Dominican American? I don't know. I Could you imagine it. one day just saying, okay, I'm going to make the shift. I'm an American. I, I, don't, I don't see myself doing it. Uh-huh. Be open to it, by the way, because that happens to a lot of people. Yeah. In fact, to a lot of activist type people who yeah. are, who they, they take on the idea of I'm an American. It's like, like, it's like this. This is how they say it. I'm an American, damn it. Treat me equal to everybody else. Especially brown people like yourself, black and brown. You're, 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 you're black, brown. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Like, so, especially black, black and brown, brown people like yourself. Like, you no, know, I demand the rights, rights of an American now. Treat me like an American. Don't yeah. treat me like someone who's not. Can yeah, you? yeah. I, I understand that. Like, sometimes they would treat you as if you, even though you spend, like, let's say, 30 years in this country, they yeah. still treat you like a foreigner. Like, you don't know the customs you don't know the ways to like live here and stuff yeah and i'd see why why you would say that treat me as an american uh when when you're being treated that way yeah i got you yep yep hey sam Sam, how 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 about you like Like, can you what would it take for you to kind of take on american identity um to be honest i think like even though i live in america like I feel like keeping my heritage alive is so important for me. I would, I don't, if, if I get an American citizenship, I would still stay 
oh, I'm Korean American, because like I don't want to deny the fact that I was born in Korea and also like spent my entire life, almost my entire life there. So I wouldn't want to just like reject the fact that I was born in Korea, but I still want to I still want to keep that heritage alive. But like like for example, if if I get married and have a child here, I would I would still like teach them how to speak Korean mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. I can keep keep that tradition alive, my heritage alive. Do you do you guys do the two of you know that the vast that almost every single immigrant who has ever come to the United States said the exact same thing that the two of you just said? So my ancestors, right, who came from various places in England and. And, and Ireland and Scotland and Germany and and uh, and and believe it or not, bro, I have in my DNA ancestry I have like two percent Sub-Saharan African. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea where that came from, uh, but that's kind of crazy. But all of my white ancestors, when the initial people who came here, they said the exact same thing that you did. Whether they came in the 19th century, the 18th century, the 17th century, they all said the same thing. They hung on to their culture because they were connected to their culture back home. And they said, yeah, we wanna, I want to be part of the United States. But I'm, they spoke their mother tongue. They read newspapers or got those who came you know, later, read newspapers from back home. They were connected to back home. They wanted to hold on to that for the same reasons that you did. Yeah, like, for example, and I don't think it's a matter of patriotism or, any, like, or anything like that. No, it's just the... It's just, yeah. just the experiences you lived. Like, you, yeah. you betray... You, uh, the fact that you... If you stop calling yourself that, it's almost as if you're, you're leaving behind all those friends you met, all those people you met, all, all the experiences you lived, all your extended family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, for example, I have... Because uh, Dominicans like to travel, like, they like to leave the country. I just, yeah. <laughs> they like to leave the country. So I have a, a lot of people around the world, and my uncle, I have a special, specific case of my uncle that's living in Switzerland. He likes to say that he's Swiss, he's not Dominican, he's Swiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you go to his, you go to his studio, he's a, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the name in English, like, make clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. He, he, when you go to his studio, he has a Dominican flag up. Yeah. And yep. he keeps up with the news, and he talks to you about things that happened there, and you ask him, like, Oh, I thought you. Were, I thought you were Swiss. What are you doing with the Dominican flag there? Yeah. And just like, oh no, it's just some guy put it up there. It's not me, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's so, actually really funny. Uh, Taylor would yeah, be the, Taylor. the term. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the thing that's that makes the United States so, such a fascinating. First off, the U.S. has two, two sides, right? The one, one side, side is this is I mean, probably one of the most amazing countries in the world in the sense that so many people came here from all over the world. We went through, we, you know, on this continent, in the Americas, the, the most extensive, longest lasting genocide in human history of the indigenous peoples who were here. Slavery, which just took over the whole continent, more in South America than even in North America. And, and yet, we somehow we get along pretty well. Like we can say, oh, we don't get along at all. Look at, look at, look at all these people in here, man. This is like, see how people are just hanging out, they're sitting next to each other. This is mostly every day in the United States, year after year after year, mostly. So we can point to the glass being half full, but if we, or half empty, but if we point, if we look at it as half full, it is amazing that we have been able to do what we've done in this country with so many people, with so many customs and backgrounds, and yet we've only had one major civil war. You know, one major civil war, man. That's it. But on the other side, we are a country that has had so... Man, we have just had the treatment of people of different backgrounds has been often very appalling. Very appalling. So it's two things, you know what I mean? It's, such, it's so fascinating. This is America. It's a land of complexity. All right, All right man, listen. listen. We're going to move on to another, to two more volunteers. Thanks, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Good job, <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, you guys are great, by the way. 
Hey, um, all right, who's Bora and Nazifa? You know, I, I, when I look at, when I, oh yeah, okay, 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 my bad. Hey, do we have any questions from the stream, by the way? Today would be a really good. One of them was asking like Samantha's um, Hogwarts house because she was here the first class. Oh yeah. And S they wanted to know. Samantha's Hogwarts house. Do you, yeah? Wait, do you have an answer to that? Wait, what's your, bro? What's your, hog, what, yeah, uh, oh, here sorry. you can take that. I actually did the sorting test twice. Um, my first one was Hufflepuff, and then my second one was Gryffindor. So I would say I, I would identify myself as Huffledor. Huffledor? Yeah. Dude, I have no idea what that means, but I just never I did, did the Harry, Harry Potter, Potter thing, man. So, Huff, all right, Huffledor. I wish I had known that. We'd have used that. All right. Okay. So can you can the two of you introduce yourselves? Dude, if, yeah, and if you have a question, you can ask. Go ahead, bro. Bora, yeah, let's start with you. Uh, I'm from Long Island, New York, and I can speak Turkish fluently. And you travel, you're Turkish-American? Yeah. Or American-Turkish? Or Turkish or American? Like, how do you identify? My, all my family's born over there. Uh -huh. My parents came here, so does that make me first-gen? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. how it works. Yeah. But, but do you, how do you identify, though, when someone asks you? I say Turkish American or American Turkish. Yeah. I'm more American I want. And you like. spend a few months every year in Turkey. Three out of the twelve every year. Yeah, where do you, where's your family at mostly? Uh the capital or Bodrum. Okay. All right. Ankara? Or yeah. Um okay. okay. Go ahead. Nazifa. Now, I keep thinking, <laughs> when I see your name, I keep thinking. <laughs> You, like you, you spelled it wrong. It's Nafisa. No, right? it's Nazifa. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm just making a joke. Yeah, okay, Nazifa. So my name is Nazifa Profti. I'm a fourth year student here, uh, studying mechanical engineering, and I'm from New York City. You're from New York City, but your ancestry is Bangladesh. Oh yeah, like I was born in Bangladesh, and I moved to New York City when I was in middle school. In middle school, okay. And do you? How do you? Do you identify as? How do you identify? Bangladeshi American. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what you say often? I never had to say it, actually. I don't oh, know. Oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Wait, hang on. So, so, wait, hang on. This is the first time you've, I've someone, someone has ever asked you? Yeah. Like, oh, seriously? Oh it's like God. whenever people ask me where you're from, like I just said, I'm from New York City. New York City, got you. Okay, so your ancestry. Yeah, yeah by, by the way, people, people get, just understand something here. The way, the way you ask, you know, the, you, people ask people like, where are you from? And like, where are you from? But, but the way to ask that, in, to, 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 to diffuse anything that might happen, it's just like, what is your ancestry? And then the ancestry means, because a lot of people like Nasifa, Nasifa, yeah. you really got to do the Z, right? <laughs> okay, that's cool. The Nasifa, how did, wait, Naziva. Nasifa. Nasifa. Yep. Okay. Uh, for, because for her, like you're, you're, really, you're, you're, Amer you're very Americanized in a certain sense, right? Yes. So if I say, where are you from? You're like, I'm I from New York. York City, yeah. And then I, what, what I often hear sometimes, people, no, where are you really from? Yeah, people have asked me that. They're like, oh, where's your parents from? Like, where are you really for from? That's when I was like, yeah, like I was born in Bangladesh and then I moved here when I was like 10 years old. Okay, but some people would say, if I said, hey, where are you really from? You're like, no, I'm really from New York City. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But if you just start out with ancestry, well, hey, what's your ancestry? Then, you know, you're, you're okay, right? Okay, so here's a question um, for you. If, um, if someone says, can you, if someone says I'm an American, um, oh wait, actually, you can go back or just black in the screen for a second. What, how important is it that they, to be in, to identify for you guys, the two of you, to identify someone as an American that they speak English. I don't know what I'm pointing, by the way. But I think it's very important to speak English. Yeah, what? To, to be an American. To be an American, yeah. Okay. And speak okay. English. All right. Say, can you say something about that? Uh, I feel like 
most European and Asian families, you're forced to learn two languages. In Turkey, all of my friends, they're forced to speak English no matter what, just to become American or if they do want to go to, you know, our country. Yeah. It's <laughs> like learn English, just like that's a second language that you just learn in school. So if someone says, I'm an American and they don't speak English, what do you, what do you think? I'm thinking of like immigrants, they just like moved from a different, different country and then like got their citizenship. And so they're learning, like for my parents, um, they're not fully, especially for my mom, she's not fully fluent in English, but then she knows English. Like she works, like she speaks English. And I feel like every country that you go to outside of the United States has their own language. Um, so for US, um, if you want to be an American, I feel like, it is important for you to know English. It's important for you to know English. And that's kind of how we communicate with each other. Okay, see, so say more. Wait, hang on a second. This is important. This is important now because here you are the immigrant, right? Yes. And you're saying, th th this is like, this is what people who are identified as nationalistic in their ideology, like, you know, people who would support, who would be considered conservative or right-wing or whatever, nationalistic, I don't know, patriot, really patriotic, right? They would be like, you need to learn English when you come to the United States. So you're kind of saying that in a way. I'm so saying I want you that to because, um, so I have my permanent resident here and I actually take my citizenship test in like two weeks. Oh, seriously? Yeah. So, and part of the test, you have to read in English, write in English, you have to be able to have a conversation with someone in English. And I feel like if you are like, and that's just like what I think, like if you're coming to a country and just like, and trying to become a citizen, like it you is important, it is important for you to know that, that language at least. Bro, so, but if people decide they don't want to learn the language, how, so, you know, you're both kind of saying, hey, it's really important that you, but if, but if someone's like, yeah, whatever, I don't feel like it, then what? Then I don't think they'll be as welcomed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Say, say more though. Because I feel like language is a border, and if you want to cross that border, you got to learn it. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you'll always, you'll never be able to connect truly. Well, okay, so, but there, there are two things, right? You're saying, hey, for the good of that person, they should learn English because this is going to be a barrier for you. But, but there's also for the good of the country, right? So what about just for the, from the perspective of the United States or other citizens of the country, like what? Why should people learn English? Um, I feel like there's always some stereotypes about certain countries where they're not as smart, but if they prove themselves that they can overcome and learn and not be as tough to deal with, then I feel like they'll be more respected. Uh huh. So I think it's a good thing for the people if they do learn it. For the people themselves. Yeah. But I'm talking about what about the good thing for the current citizens of the country in which they want to come, like current Americans. Do you have a response to that? So... When like, why I, do you why care? I think why it's, do we care? Why do we care? And first thing first goes for me, um, for example, when I first moved here, I did not know English. So I would spend hours in the library just like reading books, learning how to speak in English. And within three months, like I pretty much got it done. And I'm not saying like you have to be good at it. It's just like I feel like if you are a citizen or want to become a citizen, you do have to have some sort of knowledge and know what the other person is talking about. Like, there are so many important decisions that as US citizens, like, you know, they make in terms of voting, in terms of all the other rights. And I feel like it is important um, to participate in it. And, okay. you know, if you truly want to understand what's going on, I feel like learning English would help you understand that better of okay. like what's going on. All right. First off, I, I want to say something about the all, all four of you and the four volunteers last week. Um, the, you know, the, the reason I teach like this is because I'm just loving listening to what people say. Like, this is so fascinating to me, you know, and more, way more fascinating than anything I could say. But listen, let me say this. Uh, can you tell the class what the two of you have given up by giving up? And I don't mean like in a, in a bad way, you know, like, Oh, we've sacrificed so much, but what have you given up to be who you are? 
And then it's because usually what we do is we talk about what you've gained, right? Oh, oh but look, but you're, look, who do you want to be? How many people in Bangladesh would love to be you right now? Taking A lot. <laughs> like 99, 90, how what percent would like to be, you have people your age in Bangladesh would love to be a student at Penn State University. Like a lot of people, I would assume. <laughs> like above 95%? At least that's what I think because um, I feel like I'm very blessed to be here. Okay. And there are a lot, like, yes, every country has their problems. But especially in the U.S., there are so many opportunities. And career-wise, there's so much to do and, like, okay. so All many right. opportunities. All right, so like let me that. ask you this. What have the two of you given up? Uh, I've given up. Some of my language, actually, because every time I go back to Turkey, everyone just says, wow, you speak like a foreigner, or wow, you have an American accent. And I don't even realize it, so it's shocking. Uh, when I was younger, I always had to switch foods because every time my mom packed like Turkish meals, my American friends were like, what is that, what is that? It looks so weird, it looks nasty, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with this, so I'm just going to make a sandwich. Uh -huh. So I gave up some of my <laughs> food. Or so you get, so you give up a certain sense of just of like of comfort of being in your body. Like you start to get split in these different ways. Uh huh. Okay. How about you? I think language is definitely number one because um, when I when I first moved here, you know, it was like back in 2014, and then I went back to Bangladesh like seven years later, and it was harder for me to kind of. Um, when I spoke with my extended family and they were like, oh, she's American because of like how she speaks. So I definitely and then that. that. Put, and then that puts a wall up between you and them. Yes. Right? So, yeah. so that means like you can't easily go back and connect with them in the same kind I, of way. Yeah, I don't really feel connected to them just because to them, I'm American. Got and you. it's just like, oh, she lives in the U.S. Um, Got so it's you. just that. Hey, can you put a, can you put the, so look, I just want to, I want to show you this, right? So this is, um, these are the number of people in the United States who speak English in home, okay? So, uh, and speak, a, spoke a language other than English at home, okay? Um, five and older. And if you look at this, people have the idea that, you know, historically speaking, another thing is every immigrant that has come into the United States, unless they came, wait, how old were you when you first came here? 10, 11, or And how old were you? Born here. You were born here? Okay. Yeah. So every immigrant who comes here, it says they, they hang on to their language at some level because that's your language, right? And, but, but right now, you know, these are the, the number of people who speak a language other than English at home, you know, which is really, relatively speaking, not that many, and yet, relatively speaking, a lot. But, they, but those are mostly Im new immigrants because the second generation people lose it. Like your kids, if you have kids... They're not going to speak Turkish. You're going to hammer it into them, and they're just not going to want to speak it. And you're, how many language, what language, how many languages did you, did you speak? So about? I'm fluent in Bengali and English. Uh -huh. So like at home, I speak English with my brother. So with my mom and dad, I only speak in Bengali. So if you have kids, your kids aren't probably going to learn Bengali. Yeah, I t tell my mom that all the time. I was like, you got to like teach my kids in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, here. So just to see this, I think this is actually kind of fascinating. What the most common language after English and Spanish in every state. So, you know, you look uh, Mandarin and Cantonese is all of the orange, right? Vietnamese and the, and the, the, the bright orange, the kind of yellow orange is Vietnamese. German is yellow. Right? And then uh, French is kind of a yellow green, which would be here. Arabic. I mean, it's really fascinating to see that this is a nation of so many languages. In, in, in. Okay, so I want to ask another question. You can blacken the screen, by the way. How, how, does, um, how about being a Christian? Let's talk about the U.S. as a Christian nation. Like, how about, um, what, does being a Christian in your eyes make the here in the U.S., when you meet someone and they're a Christian— does, does in your eyes, does it make him slightly more American, do you think? Maybe, not in your eyes, just in the eyes of most people here in the U.S. Yeah, like I feel like Christianity is like the top like religion here. So, I mean. So when you hear that someone's a Christian, it just feels like that's just a little more aligned 
with being an American or a U.S. citizen. I actually agree because my parents, I'm Muslim, but they sent me to a Catholic middle school to teach me you know, how Americans are. And how Amer Wait, how Americans are? How yeah, American like they Christians taught me respect, are. like this is how you should act, this is how you should be. Uh-huh. Wait, so how American culture is or how American Christians are? Both. Both? They yeah. wanted that, that's why. And, and so what did you learn about Christians? Uh... I learned we had to go to church Sunday every time. The kneelers hurt my legs all the time. It was just, I didn't really, because I still felt like a barrier again, because once the second my friends found out I was Muslim, they cooked me bad. So you, so so kind of siding up with Christianity helped you to and understand something. As an American, yeah. Uh -huh. When I first, yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, Nazifa, how about you? Like, can you say more about the importance of Christianity and the way that you think about Americans? Uh, so, I've actually went to church like multiple times, even though I'm Muslim. Um, that's just like how, it, just trying to figure out <laughs> in terms of religion. But I think um, in terms of like Christianity in the U.S., I feel like, if my parents are like saying like they know that Christianity is the main, I guess, like religion in this country. Uh -huh. So I just went to charge just for like religious purposes and just to try to understand uh, things better. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So here. But that's all I can no, say. No, no, no. This is good. No, I like this. I, I, it's interesting what both of you are saying because I would imagine that for me, uh, if I were immigrating or going to another country, there are many aspects of culture. Remember the very first question I asked? Uh, there are two previous volunteers. It's like, okay, but what have you, how did, wh how did you assimilate? Like, what did you do to assimilate? Well, taking on the religion is one way of assimilating. Hey, uh, uh, Nidhi, can you put, so here, this is the population of the U.S., by the way. It's, you know, we're only two-thirds Christian in the U.S. right now. So it, it's not, I mean, which says something, right? That when you, you say like, okay, we'll take on the religion of the U.S., but, you know, two-thirds is two-thirds, right? It means one out of three. So that means this class right here, that, the, that essentially if we broke it up into three sections, that means this entire section over here is not Christian. So when you say like, yeah, well, I, tried, I wanted to really understand what Christianity was about, well, that, you're, that you're only talking about these two sections here. You're not talking about that entire section over there. So just a thought about it. I mean, any thoughts on that? I think, I think that makes me feel better because I thought it would be majority, like 90% mm -hmm. Christian from my place that uh -huh. I was born in. Same, Same with you? Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people have that idea. Well, a lot of people are not a, a, a really affiliated. But the, the other thing is here, this is the thing about white folks, right? So white non-Hispanic population in the United States is 59%. So the white non-Hispanic population, or 60%. I mean, the, and the other thing, it said 60, but it's just a matter of how you really cut it. But those data were from 2020. But the white non-Hispanic Christians in the United States, so are, are 42%, or pardon me, 42% of the American public are white non-Hispanic Christians. So, you know, that's two out of, when you think about white people, so the two of you, right? Like white people and white Christians, it's only two out of five people. So. I thought it was a lot more. I think also because like just because of my friends and most of them are Christian. So like to me, I thought it was, it would be like majority of the people would be Christians. Yeah. yeah. So what's that say to you though about the U.S.? About just complexifying things? It's way more diverse than I thought. Uh huh. It's a it's an incredibly diverse place, you know. Well, yeah. So when you think about us, so you know, right now we're in an election year. Um, it looks like we're going to be in for a lot of conflict because our because uh, our one candidate. I'm not even sure he's alive, but you know, whatever. I listened. I watched his lips move, but I'm not really sure. The other guy likes to start fights. And has a lot of people that supports him that really seems to, they seem to like starting a lot of fights too. Uh, 
Well, so does the other guy supporters. I'm not really, everybody seems to want to be fighting with somebody. So we're, the point is, we're headed toward a lot of conflict. And yet, when you look okay. at it, it's, it's, I'm wondering where the conflict, you know, like, we should, maybe there should be a lot, we would imagine more, look, okay, hang on, that's not my question. Is, is the diversity that I'm pointing out, is it, does it strengthen the United States or weaken it from your perspective? Hey, wait, by the way. Hey, I'd like to get a question from the stream if we have one, by the way. Does the diversity strengthen or weaken the fabric, the social fabric of the U.S.? What's your gut feeling? I think it strengthens it. How so? Because it adds more perspectives into making us better. Uh -huh. If we couldn't see what the problem was, then someone else will eventually, I think. So, Okay, and so you calling yourself, for example, Turkish American, how do, instead, of, tur instead of American, how does that strengthen the U.S.? And you, if you say uh, Bangladeshi American as opposed to American, tell, tell us how that strengthens the social fabric of the United States. And by the way, I know you just, every time you get ready to talk, I cut you off, yeah, but, but this is actually a really cool question, and I'm... I really want to hear your answer. Could you define like social fabric? Yeah, like that like, we get along. Like, look here, this is like a really cool social fabric here. Like everybody is getting along. January 6th, 2021 in the Capitol building or after George Floyd was killed or whatever it is, like people out like just hammering away at each other. That's a lot of division. But this is, this, this is a really, you know, these are, these are all Penn Staters, man. If we, if we took you to the basketball game the other night where Penn State won, where nobody expected them to win, or to a football game, you'd all be chanting like, we are Penn State. We could do a we are right here, and you'd watch the whole class come together. That's the social fabric, man. You're, we're all like, we're in this together. So how, does you, you, how do you guys being identified with your country of ancestry strengthen that? I definitely agree with the perspectives because it brings out a lot of the, um, and I could think about in an engineering setting a little bit, like for example, like when you have a diverse group of people, you are bringing in so many different ideas to solve, let's say a problem that we have. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but then that could also get into like conflict that okay. one person may not agree with the other person and you have to kind of like consider like be considerate and then just come into like a something like in between that everyone would agree with. Okay. All right. Um, but mostly I think it's strengths in a sense that you bring out a lot of the perspectives, you bring out a lot of the cultures. Um, but then also I think in a sense, like sometimes it weakens because if you think about yeah. the security. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, yep. Awesome. So there is. Um, okay. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Nice, nice answer, answer, by the way. Bro, how about you? It can be mixed, right? What she said, yeah, yeah, both yeah. strong. Yeah. Uh, the security, how would it decrease our security? I'm not trying to... How would... How would bringing in other cultures, would that decrease well, our security? Well, you know, because you don't... People start not identifying. Like, if you suddenly are here and you start thinking more about supporting Erdogan than Joe Biden or Donald Trump right, whichever one becomes our next president, let's say, but you're more into, no, but I'm really focusing on Turkey. And it's like, no, dude, you're here. Focus on the U.S. Make the U.S. a better place too, right? Okay, I can see why that's a weakness. But overall, I think it is more of a strength as well because of the perspectives. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Joe, yeah, go ahead. So Axel says, uh, will the U.S. become a Latin and Spanish-speaking country in the future? Do you guys have a, bro, do you, do you have a thought on that? We, Spanish is kind of our second language here. It's very much our second language here. Do you know how many Americans speak Spanish, by the way? Do you have any idea? Yeah. Well, based on the, on the graphic we see, that it was all, all the language after English and Spanish. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that Spanish is very, yeah. very widely spoken here. But something I'd like to say is that uh, when I first came here, I expected everyone to speak English. Yeah. I expect the Spanish to be very, uh, let's say, exclusive. Yeah. Like something rare, but then I get to to Reading. Everyone speaks Spanish. Yeah, in Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, 
Did I did I move? Did I actually? Yeah, move did country? you actually? There are more people in Reading that speak Spanish than yeah. in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and no, I, more people in the U.S. that speak Spanish than in the Dominican Republic. I wouldn't doubt it. And and then no, no, there are, <laughs> there are. Oh yeah, no, there's like 48 million Americans speaks speak Spanish, and I, the population of the DR is what is it like? It's got it can only be about 15 million yeah. or something. And and something too in Reading, there's like. Uh, the population doesn't have to learn English because everyone's speaking Spanish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's people there that have lived for like 30 years don't know a word of English because they yeah. don't need to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where, whereas, whereas, by the way, for you guys, not that many people are going to speak Turkish or Bengali, so you're going to learn English. But what, what people don't understand, this is something right there. Hey, wait, hang on one second, y'all. What? Um... What, what is there, this question about the social fabric has always been a concern here. It's a concern all over the world, all over the world. So Samantha was up here talking about Korea. In Korea, it's a major issue because the birth rate in Korea is dropping so much that Koreans are going to have to bring in so many foreigners from the outside to work, to live. They got to build the birth rate. And so as a result of that, it's going to really change the social fabric of what is Korea. Like Korea is a very monocultural society. It's a very tight knit communitarian world, but you start to change that. Well, the United States has been doing this from, from day one and but people coming from different places and like trying to make this country into something like a unity, right? I agree. Like, I feel like you don't see a lot of the other countries like us. Like you have so many different people from different cultures yeah. all coming in together mm -hmm. in one of the countries. And like, I've traveled to like different countries, but I have never seen anything like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, exactly. So Axel, the answer to your question is, uh, um, we, are, no, we're, we will always be an English speaking country, but Spanish is to a considerable degree, especially in many parts of the United States, very much the second language, if not equal to English. So in certain areas. So, hey, listen, man. Um, two things. One, uh, does anyone have, we have, we, have, I, we have a minute for another question. Does anyone have a question they want to ask? Besides you, bro. Does anyone have a question they want to kick it out? Dude, do you have a question? All right, go ahead. Kick it out, man. It was in relation to that, so uh, I'll word it, I'll phrase it a bit differently. So, um, and it's targeted can towards stand them, up so people and, and, can I, and it's targeted towards y'all, because uh, dude, stand I'm, up. I'm from I'm from Texas, right? And there's a lot of folks coming from Mexico. Um, who, dude, by the way, who don't when, pe when people look at you, I'm sure the first thing they think is, "Oh, this guy's from Texas." Uh, uh, with your kiss shirt yeah i know on. i know okay i get it i get it i get it all right um and there's a lot of folks who are coming from mexico or like you know central america or south america and i've noticed this a lot there's a lot of family who kind of like quasi refuses to assimilate to american culture or uh -huh. i.e speak english and frankly speaking it's okay because they have such a big community that they have their own society that is okay just speaking Spanish or maintaining their own culture. So I wanted to ask y'all, because y'all were talking about how like you gotta kind of like speak English to become American, right? Like, would you still consider them as Americans? Because they're technically in yeah. America with a green card and living in America legally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good question. Man. And then go, you can put that up, by the way. Can you answer that? If people don't speak any English at all. So are they American? I think there's levels to this, and I still consider them American at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just if you want to get to a better place or more respected, then you should. You should. You should. Oh, should, should. is a strong word. All right, I got you. But, but you might want to consider it. Yeah, at least all take right. some lessons. Dude, all right, man. Hey, nice, nice job. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Yeah, can we give him a hand? All right.